Brothers and sisters in Islam, a person asked me one time, so we get to live eternally in paradise? We said yes. You get to get all of this in paradise? Yes, said yes. Everlasting bliss and happiness? He said, they said, well, isn't that boring? Question is, doesn't it seem like it's boring? If you're going to live forever, you're going to get bored of everything. You're tired of it all. Okay, same thing over and over. And in the end, you're going to get bored. My brothers and sisters in Islam, subhanallah, this brain we have, this intellect we have in this life, with its limitations, how can you compare what you know in this world to an unseen world that we haven't even encountered and can't even understand? This person is actually comparing the state that he is in in this life to the state that which he doesn't know how it will be in Jannah. He's comparing the physics and the laws of science which govern us in this life. That if you if something painful happens to you, you get pain, you, you feel it. If there is sadness, you'll be sad. If something happens to you which makes you happy, you'll feel it. Uh, there's immortality in this life. You know, if you have something for long enough, you're going to get bored of it. And this is the laws which govern us in this life. These laws, my brothers and sisters, will not exist in Jannah. These laws do not exist in Jannah. And the only reason why a person would ask this question, are we going to get bored in paradise? Is because of your experience that you've gone through in this life. In Jannah, there is no boredom. Listen to what Allah says in the Quran. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Wa naza'na ma fi sudurihim min ghillin tajri min tahtihim al anhar. Wa qalu alhamdulillahi alladhi hadana lihada wa ma kunna linahtadiya lawla an hadana Allah. لَقَدْ جَاءَتْ رُسُلُ رَبِّنَا بِالْحَقِّ وَنُودُوا أَنْ تِلْكُمُ الْجَنَّةُ الَّتِي أُورِثْتُمُوهَا بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ Which means, and in Jannah, we will take away from their chests, from their hearts, all feelings of of, neg of negativity. Beneath them there will be rivers that will, thro will flow. Then when you say beneath them in paradise, meaning at your command, at your service, at your will. And they will say in paradise, when they see all of this, praise be to Allah, who has guided us to this place. And if it wasn't for Him, we would have never been guided here to Jannah. And we took away, we will take away from their chests, from their hearts, all feelings of negativity. Brothers and sisters, listen to this intricate, this is, this is detailed, this is deep meaning which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to explain to us. We take away from their hearts all feelings of negativity. Why didn't Allah say, we took away from their memory all memories of hardship? He said, we took away from their hearts, from their chests, min sudurihim. Sometimes, you experience a particular feeling as a response to something that happens to you in life. Sadness, happiness, remorse, excitement, temptation. There are thousands of feelings we feel. As you grow older, you begin to discover what these feelings are and you give them a name. And sometimes there are feelings that you experience which you can't explain. Isn't that right? You just can't explain it in words. Logically, you cannot. You cannot explain what these what this feeling is we hear it in poetry we hear it in songs non-muslims make and the muslims they make we hear it in all sorts of literature poetry about feeling feeling comes from here somewhere here in the mind in the heart in the chest in the inside which is unexplainable a phenomenon it doesn't come from the brain the brain only helps you know your feelings because you're alive it you know, triggers the the senses. But the feeling itself is unexplainable. This is why Allah said, and we took away from their chest, from themselves, from their hearts, all feelings of negativity. So even those that you can explain and those you can't explain, the negative ones, you will no longer experience them there. So all memories of hardship, of agony, of injustice, of sadness, of sorrow, will be taken away. Even if you remember them, the feelings 
of sadness and sorrow to them will no longer exist. Why? There are many ways. Number one, Allah takes away that element. So feelings of boredom. You can't be bored. There's no way of feeling bored anymore. The creation of boredom is no longer in there. In another way, Allah does it. The beauty, the unimaginable, endless provision that we have, that you may have in Jannah, insha'Allah, keeps going on and on. That in itself, that, that, that beauty, that, that happiness in itself, that celebration in itself, no one can possibly, can possibly experience feelings of sorrows, hardness, uh, sadness, or boredom. There's no room for boredom. And it's endless. It's endless. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us also in the Qur'an that in paradise, Allah says about how long you will live. He says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ سُعِدُوا فَفِي الْجَنَّةِ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا مَا دَامَتِ السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ رَبُّكَ as for those who are given happiness in paradise, they will stay in that happiness so long as the heavens and the earth are there, except what your Lord wills, a gift which is endless. First of all, as long as the skies and the earth last, this is a metaphor. Allah is telling us, you're going to stay there forever. I'm not going to destroy them. And number two, إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ رَبُّكَ it means that Allah is telling us that if it wasn't for the will of Allah, you will not be in paradise. As though He's telling us the eternal life in paradise is not within itself. Like, it's not paradise that makes you live, it is Allah that makes you live. Al Rasul said, Fiha mala aynur ra'at, wala udhunun samiat, wala khatara ala qalbi bashar. In it, there are things which no eye has ever seen, no ear has ever heard, and no heart has ever imagined. Again, we hear the word, the phrase, the expression, no heart has ever imagined well a khatar or even thought of no heart has thought of it's not attributed to the brain it's not attributed to the thought process so sometimes you feel like something but you don't know what it is your mind your brain can't tell you what it is you say i just i, I want something I, I know the feeling but i can't explain what i want has it ever happened to you i can't describe it what i want but i want it <laughs> whatever it is that i'm feeling i want it but i, I don't know what it is Listen to what he says in the Qur'an. He is the one who made the sufun, the ships, ships the size of mountains, float in the water. Don't you see it with your eyes? Now a person with a scientific mind will say, oh, you know, it's because of the shape and the physics and the um, concave or the whatever shape of the boat. But the one who made this law is Allah. So in Jannah, he can make another law. The law of you able to glide. Do we not go see astronauts floating in space in the absence of gravity? Who is the one who facilitated this? It is Allah. But what we witness in this life is only a portion of a portion, a small tiny example of what is endless in paradise. You eat a beautiful sweet. Mm, you enjoy it. You love it. What is in Jannah is beyond that. You will also love it. It will be sweet, but not like the sweetness of this world. In this world, you may eat something sweet, but if you eat too much of it, it becomes bitter, doesn't it? In the feelings. You don't want it anymore. You're about to vomit. You don't want to look at it. Please don't show me another piece of that cake. But I thought you loved it. Yeah, I know, but I've eaten enough. So thank you. In Jannah, there's none of this. <laughs> From their hearts and their chests, all feelings of negativity are taken away. So, will you be jealous of one another? No. Will you need to be jealous? No, there's no need to be jealous. This person said to me, Man, if there's no jealousy, you know, you don't enjoy having good things to show it off. This is a fair question. For a person who thinks within the, within the laws that govern this world, why do you need jealousy in this world in order to show it off? In general, you don't need that. There is a happiness and an enjoyment beyond that. This is only a little bit. That's why you need jealousy and you need to show it off. In Jannah, you don't need that. The hap it's beyond. Way, it's in a superior, superior level of happiness that you don't even think about that. When a person gets there, they say, Whoa, oh my God, I don't know where to start. And where it ends. It's endless. Allah is able to create forever. Beautiful things forever. Allah is able to renew the enjoyment forever. So in Jannah, it's renewed. 
forever. I'll give you a very brief example which I'm going to describe in next classes to come. In relation to spouses, you will have spouses in paradise. Husbands will have wives and wives will have husbands in paradise. The best of wives and the best of husbands beyond your imagination and mind. In one hadith, it states that the beauty of the person in Jannah is always renewed. The beauty is encompassed with light. Light plays a huge role in your beauty in Jannah. And this light changes its form. You, still are, you can still familiarize. You know who your wife is. You know who your husband is. You know in Jannah. But the beauty looks different every time. You feel different every time. Isn't it all about feelings? In Jannah, you feel different every time. In one hadith, it states that you go, there's a market there, and you meet other people. Market means a place of meeting with people of paradise. You meet them. And when you come back and you meet your spouses, your wife says to you, you are more beautiful than before. And you say to her, there's something about you, you are more attractive than before. So what happens over there is when you meet people, you exchange light and beauty as well. You know when you shake hands with someone who's got lots of perfume on, and you haven't got any on, you go home, your wife says to you, mm, you smell nice. So I, oh, I, I was at the masjid with beautiful brothers. I must have shaken someone's hand. So in Jannah, you also exchange beauty and light this way. And this is endless. So there is no boredom here.